Hi everyone, this is your guide to clubs and society events and how to set them up. They show up on the SU website like this, so your uh, society or club logo, this is the title, date, and then click through. So give it a really good name, your event a really good name, so students know what to click on. Uh, sign into the SU website, you'll see your student dashboard, and that will look like this. Um, I've got a slightly different view because I've got a super admin access so I can see lots of things that you can't. Um, you'll see your committee members here, obviously the name of your club or society, and then a blue manage button which will either be here or here. Click on that and then underneath the name of your club or society these options will change. For events, trips and merchandise you need this option, so select that one. Here you can see any events that you've submitted, applications, so pending, approved or declined. Um, click on new applications for your latest one. This is a online form and most of it you don't need to fill in, which is good news. Um, this guide text all the way through, so read that to help you. Um, if you are doing any traveling, you might need to fill these bits in, but we're not going to cover that today. We're just going to do the basics, uh, which most of you will use all the time. So you will need to click that one on. The only thing you should never, ever, ever do in this form is use the recurring events feature. If you do, we'll just decline your application. That's because this function doesn't work. So if you've got an event that is every Thursday uh, in term time, fill in a separate application for each Thursday event. So let's click next. So give your event a good name, something that students will feel confident about and understand what you're doing and want them to come to. Anything with a red asterisk is mandatory, anything else is not. So give it a good description. Let's see if we can borrow one. Um, solo jazz okay so let's pick their description obviously you won't do this you'll actually put a description to your event there's two parts to events there's the event date itself and then the tickets date so the event dates as it says here should be when the doors open and when the doors close or when the trip leaves and when the trip comes back so let's imagine we're doing a yoga session and it starts at one o'clock and it's on next Saturday and it finishes at two o'clock. So it's now a long session. I'm just adding that, you know, so you would call it something much better than that. Uh, budget option also, you need to fill it in. Venue, two options. If it's, if you select university, you can free tech, you can add anything you like there. So if it's a university venue, obviously you can put it in there, but if it was on West Street, you could also use that option. But if it's in the student union, use that option. And then you've got a drop down list of all the rooms in the student union. Obviously book your spaces before you put in your event application. Do you want to publish on the website? Always, yes you do, otherwise nobody will see it. We don't offer this option because we're a cashless or a cashless SU. This is where you set up the products or tickets. So despite its name, events, trips, application, you can use it for merchandise as well. So you could do a hoodie. Um, uh, so you'd put that in here, but let's stick with our example of a yoga session. So this is a member's ticket. That'll become important later, give it a price. I'm going to say it's five pounds. You've got to put two decimal points in there. So this is when you want the tickets themselves to go on sale. So generally that's straight away. So I'm doing this on the 21st of October. So I'm going to click it and it's there. And because our events, my events on the 29th, I'm going to select that and it starts at one o'clock the event, but I'm going to select 1.30. So if people turn up late or want to buy tickets on the door, they can still do that via their smartphone um, and your event listing on the SU website. They can just go on and buy it. Dead simple, okay? If this was merchandise, so if this was a hoodie, these dates should be <coughs> the last, well, they should be exactly the same, but for the event itself, they should be the last day you want them on sale. 
Uh, so that first bit, uh, we'd set them uh, for the last day you want to sell hoodies from. So let's say you want to sell your hoodies all through the start of term and through to February 2023. This would be the 21st of February uh, 2023, 11.40, and the same 21st of February 2023 at um, 12.30. So one hour apart in the future, okay? So let's stick with our example, though, of the yoga session. Uh, if you've got unlimited tickets, minus one. If you've got a limit, so I'm going to say we've only got, actually, I'm going to say we've got 10. 10 tickets, okay? Um, max per transaction, max per person. These need to match. Because this is a member's ticket, it should be one and one. If it was a general student ticket, uh, you could go 10 and 10. So... Uh, a student could buy for their friends, uh, so they could buy up to 10 tickets, okay? That's how that works. Ticket information, really important. Um, when a student buys your ticket, they'll get an email confirmation with a PDF attached to it with a QR code. Underneath that QR code, uh, you can type anything in here to help be helpful. So something like this. Uh, you can scan uh, people's uh, students' tickets on the door using the SU app. So uh, as a committee member, you can use the SU app to scan using your smartphone. Um, and even if you don't actually check tickets particularly, it's useful to put this on the, on the ticket. It's reassuring to the student, okay? Uh, do you want to sell online? Yes, you definitely do. Again, if you don't tick that, it won't show up on the, show up on the SU website. We don't offer this service. Uh, if you ticked it on, it doesn't matter, but you don't have to. Right, this bit is who can buy your ticket. Okay, so remember, this is a member's ticket. So uh, that's students who are group members of your group. Uh, okay, so this is who can buy it, and this is restricting that group down to your members. If it was just a general student ticket, you would unselect that one, okay? Now, some of student groups, uh, clubs and societies have associate members. So these are Hallam students, students who have graduated. They have to create an associate membership on the SU website. So if you want students and associate members and group members to be able to buy this particular ticket type, tick all three on, okay? Likewise, if you wanted, if it was just a regular ticket, so general admission ticket that you want students to buy and associate members could buy it. So that could be members of the university staff, for example. They could create an associate membership account and they could buy this. OK, so that would work. Very, very rarely you'd use public. That means anybody can buy it. They don't need to sign in. No information is captured. So if you ever use that option, anybody can buy your ticket but you don't know who they are and uh, there's no way of contacting them should you need to send them information or change the venue or anything like that. So use that at your own risk. So this is a member's ticket and I have got associate members and I have got student members, so that's what I'm doing. Options useful for, let's say you were doing a student ball for your society, so are they vegan, vegetarian, wheat-free? So when they're buying the ticket, there's a drop-down menu and they can select which one applies to them. Similarly, if this was a hoodie, small, medium, large, you know what size do they want it in, okay? And we've got shorts and socks, should you need those as well. Okay, but it's optional. So if it's a regular ticket to a yoga event, you don't need that. Coding, you'll only see your three-letter department code. Nominal, there's a few options here. Generally, you're going to, if you're a society, you will use this one. If you're a sports club, you will use this one. That means it goes into your bank accounts. If you're working or liberation committee, you would use this one. If you've bought, uh, if you've signed out and bought uh, tickets in advance from the Ents office for Raw or Pop Tarts, you can select these uh, ticket accounts. So the money from those sales will go directly into your ticket in the advance account, okay? So there are options for you there. I am going to select society 
and that two options if you're working or a liberation committee select one if you're a club or society click six select six submit so <clears throat> that's our product set up you could set up more than one so you could have a student ticket or a general ticket the good news is just create select create it selects another one it remembers all that finance information already uh, you just need to fill in the other details okay so that's that if you click next we skip right down to number 11 Woohoo! and generally you'll never need to fill any of that in don't ever use this because that would be on your room bookings uh, information not your event application and you could fill that in if it's in collaboration Next one is risk assessment. So you might need to fill in a risk assessment. If you do, that link takes you to um, this page, which gives you information about which events do need risk assessments filling in. And you would need a member of the SU staff to approve them before you upload it here, okay? Um, if you don't need to do a risk assessment, just select this to say that you've read that. Click next. And look, we're at finish. Um, you can go back, see previous, and check that everything's all right. If you're happy with that, press finish. The team at the SU will check your event application over. We approve things within 48 hours, Monday to Friday. Um, we'll do it quicker if we can. We don't work weekends, so if you submit it on a Friday, the earliest it'll get seen is on a Monday, uh, and we'd hopefully approve it by the Tuesday. Okay, so just bear that in mind. And obviously, all your events show up here in the SU website on this bit here, okay? And there they all are. Thanks for watching, guys. There's other videos that talk you through all the other elements as well. So watch those, particularly where can I see the sales of my event. Uh, and that's a separate video just underneath this one, okay? Thanks for watching.